Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and today we're gonna work on some freshly milled flower projects. As you just saw, I am um, still figuring out, I like to weigh my freshly milled flour and all of the recipes that I've used so far and will be using in this video gives the grams. Um, I still haven't quite figured out how to convert the cups because freshly milled flour by volume is more than no, it's less than. So say for example, you have a, you scoop out a cup of all purpose flour, it's gonna be denser and heavier than if you were to scoop out a cup of freshly milled. That conversion is not one to one. So instead of fooling with that or worrying about that, I've just been going by the grams. So I've been weighing my flour as I've been milling it, which has been working out for me so far. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be making um, freshly milled sourdough sandwich bread, freshly milled sourdough English muffins, and freshly milled sourdough uh, dinner rolls. All right, Tom and I are going on a trip. We are going to Philadelphia for a few days. We're gonna go to a concert. We're gonna do some sightseeing. We've got something else that we're doing that is a surprise that I can't say because he can hear me right now. Um, and it's gonna be fun. But of course, I'm gonna do, we're staying in an Airbnb, a really cool one. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of our cooking while we're there because I can't really eat out. So I like to have that food stability and I like to take it with me and know that I can eat. Um, and so I'm taking all of this with me. So it's actually the night before we leave. We leave tomorrow late morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and start some of these projects tonight, continue them in the morning um, and then you'll see, you'll see the time progression. I've got it all typed out in my phone. That's one thing that I'm learning about sourdough, especially balancing three sourdough projects at the same time. It really helps me to actually write it down. Like, okay, the sandwich bread started at this time and then it rises for this long. So at this time, you're gonna have to shape it into the loaves and then it's gonna rise and then you bake it at this time. That alone is confusing. Add two other projects. So I have it all typed out in my phone in order. And so you'll see that in this video. Um, and so we're going to start with this, the English muffins. That's what I milled this flour for. This was, um, I have it right here, the Fresh Milled Mama. It's her recipe, and I'll link all of these in the description. None of these recipes are originally mine. Um, I definitely am feeling drawn towards freshly milled flour, so I'm not saying that I won't ever create some recipes, but I don't have any so far. So all of these recipes belong to somebody else. So um, her, it's an overnight English muffin made with uh, sourdough and fresh milled flour. I've got 275 grams of fresh milled flour. I did hard white wheat and spelt and I don't know what ratio. I just kind of poured a little of each in my mill. Um, it also wants half a cup of sourdough discard. I have two separate containers of sourdough going because I need so much for these recipes. I'm not going to weigh all my ingredients. I just wanted to weigh my freshly milled flour. And yes, I have been putting my freshly milled flour in my sourdough starter. I wasn't originally planning on doing that. I'm in some sourdough uh, and some fresh milling Facebook groups. And I know that a lot of other people use all purpose flour for their sourdough starter. They don't fool around with using the fresh milled for that. Um, however, I use my sourdough starter to make my flatbread every morning and I want my flatbread to use my freshly milled grains. So as it stands right now, I use fresh milled grains to feed my sourdough starter. I, it took to it right away. It's been working fine and I've had no issues with it. I'm also to this going to add one cup of milk. I'm just a little shy of one cup of milk, but my sourdough starter is really, really well hydrated. So I'm thinking that may make up for it. And especially with this being the English muffin dough, I'm not terribly worried about it, but I think, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get away with saying that stuff much longer. The more complicated these recipes become and the deeper I go down this rabbit hole, I really think that's gonna end up biting me. The whole, you know, me saying, oh, well, it's fine, close enough. I think I'm gonna have to start getting my act together when it comes to that kind of stuff. I actually think this looks really dry, so I am going to add in just a splash more of milk. All right, I am going to cover this with saran wrap, and it is going to have a sleepover on top of my fridge, and we will revisit this in the morning. All right, now we're gonna move on to the sandwich bread. I'm doing Farmhouse on Boone's sourdough sandwich bread recipe. I've made this recipe so many times. It's a great one. 
However, I've never made it using freshly milled flour, and she does not specify that this is a freshly milled flour recipe. That's concern number one. Concern number two, this makes two loaves of bread. My stand mixer using all-purpose flour struggles, and I've heard that KitchenAid stand mix mixers do not mesh well with freshly milled flour, that it, they really struggle and that eventually it's going to burn out. So I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm going to mix using my mixer until I don't feel like it's safe, and then I will stop and I will just hand mix for the remainder of the recipe, and we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, so to my stand mixer, I'm going to add half a cup, it's supposed to be softened butter. This is like pretty much melted butter, but we're gonna go for it. I very oftentimes use coconut oil if I don't wanna use my nice butter, but I'm taking this on our trip. I wanna splurge and have the good stuff, so I am going to use full butter this time. So naturally, I wanna get absolutely every drop in there. I'm going to add one cup of sourdough starter two tablespoons of honey, and I always just eyeball it, one tablespoon of salt, and it's probably something I should eyeball, but for some reason I never do, two and a half cups of water. It does not specify a temperature. I always just use my filtered water, um, and it comes out cold. I've never had an issue with it. All right, the only remaining ingredient is the flour, and she says in her recipe to add it last, because you may not need the full amount or you may need, need more. It's a more or less situation. And with this being freshly milled, I have absolutely no idea how much flour this is gonna have to take. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to start by putting in five cups. You know what, I'm gonna start with three cups and I'm gonna go ahead and let it start mixing and incorporating. And then I'm gonna add a cup at a time from there simply so I can see how my mixer handles it. I really don't know how this is gonna go. I'm planning on asking for, what do you guys think? A Bosch for Christmas? I'm not exactly sure which brand yet. Probably Bosch, we'll see. What do you guys use? I'm actually surprised because this is the rest of the flour, but I'm, I weighed out uh, 1,120 grams of freshly milled flour um, and it gave me a little less than eight cups. And I just put in the eighth cup and the dough is still really wet. So I might end up needing a little more flour. Let's see what it looks like after this. Actually guys, this dough feels fantastic. <laughs> I think I'm really gonna enjoy working with freshly milled flour. I can already tell I really like how it feels. I let this go ahead and knead for a few minutes and in her recipe she says let it knead in the mixer for 10 minutes and then it should pass the window pane test. Don't tell anybody but I have never done the window pane test. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I think I've heard it mentioned in a YouTube video before but I like wasn't paying attention so I'm not exactly sure. I think you like stretch the dough and you should be able to like see through it or something. I've never done it with this recipe and my loaves I've never, ever had these loaves not turn out. Um, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> so do with that what you will. The recipe will be linked down in the description. Follow the directions properly. I'm going to cover this with a hand towel, a dish towel. I'm gonna put it on top of the fridge next to where I have my English muffin um, mix starter hanging out. And then I'm going to bed. <laughs> this is the last thing that I needed to do tonight. And we will revisit this in the morning. Good morning friends, I'm back and I am ready to get these projects done. There are a couple of things I need to update you with. I had told you that I wrote in my notes the time frame for all of these projects and I'm switching a couple of things. Sometimes things look great on paper but when you start to get your hands in it you realize it doesn't quite work. I was going to shape the loaves for the bread um, and let them start rising last because I had it in my head that I was going to let them rise on the drive and bake them when we got to the Airbnb. We're about five hours away from the Airbnb. Um, that doesn't work because I need my mixing bowl. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna do that first and I'm preheating. <laughs> I turned my oven on and then naturally forgot about it. Um, letting it get nice and warm in there. Let me crack the door now, it's too warm in there. Um, and I will proof my loaves of bread in my warm oven, which will speed up the, uh, that second rise process. And I should be able to bake those before we leave. It is seven and we're leaving at 10. So I think 
I'll be able to pull it off. And we don't have to leave right at 10. Like if they're in the oven and they've got 20 minutes left and it's 10, then we'll leave at 10.30. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I think I'm going to do that. That way I have my mixing bowl because I need my mixing bowl to do my dinner rolls. And then the second thing I need to update you with, I was wrong. It's they're not sourdough um, dinner rolls. They are yeasted dinner rolls using freshly milled flour. So that was my mistake. Um, so I'm going to use all purpose flour to dust my clean workspace here. And I'm so excited to see what this dough looks like for the sandwich bread. My very first time making this recipe using freshly milled flour, and it is not a freshly milled flour recipe. So I'm interested to see if I got it right. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. I love making bread. It smells so good. Beautiful. Very nice. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Oh my goodness. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so happy. For this recipe, you want to cut your dough in half. Then you want to use your rolling pin to roll it into a rectangle. And then oftentimes I need to use my bench scraper, but this dough is not sticky. It feels so good. You just roll it up. And then I just tuck in the ends. And then here I have a Pyrex uh, bread pan and I have coated it with coconut oil to keep it from sticking. And you just lift your bread and place her right inside. Oh my goodness, guys, that's gorgeous. Oh, so exciting. All right, now we're going to move on to the dinner rolls. This recipe comes from the website Grains in Small Places. I will link it below. And I actually have to do this recipe different than how she has it. And I commented on it and she responded to it, which I really appreciated. So for this, it uses instant yeast. I don't have any instant yeast. I only have active dry yeast. And so um, for her, she has you put all the ingredients together in a bowl, um, let it sit so that the freshly milled flour can become hydrated. And then after the rest, you add in the instant yeast and knead it in. Um, for active dry yeast, usually you'll put it in the warm water and sugar and let it activate. And so um, I said, I asked her, I was like, can I add it? Can I just put the water and the sugar in the bowl, let the yeast activate, and then add in the rest of the ingredients? And she said yes, but she also suggested I leave a little bit of the yeast out and add it um, where you, at the same step that you would put in the instant yeast as well. So I will do that, that's what she thinks. Um, and also instead of water, I'm gonna use milk. So here I've got a cup of gently warmed milk that I've had on my stove. And then it calls for a third a cup of brown sugar, but I don't have any made up. So I'm just gonna do a cup, a third a cup of regular sugar. And then after the yeast activates, I'll add in a little bit of molasses for flavoring. This recipe calls for two and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. So I'm going to do one and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast right now and let that get activating. And then I'll add in the other teaspoon in a later step. I'm just gonna let this sit and activate. All right, now that our yeast is good, I wanna go ahead and add in the rest of our ingredients. We've got four tablespoons of softened butter two room temperature eggs, one teaspoon of salt, and then because we did white sugar, I'm gonna add in a little bit of molasses. And we're gonna get all of that mixed together. Not sure if my dough hook is appropriate for this recipe, but my other attachment is in the dishwasher, so this is what we're doing. All right, so now we're gonna add the flour. This is 420 grams of freshly milled hard white wheat. I, it also says three and a half cups, I, I weighed it. So 420 grams, I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in here. 
It says mix until incorporated. It warns you that this is a sticky dough and then you wanna let it rest for 15 minutes. Um, I think this is called auto lease. Is that what this is called? And it helps the um, flour become hydrated, absorb the liquids. Okay, y'all, let's make some English muffins. I'm really excited about this. I did bagels, now I'm doing English muffins. I hope that these are a success. So this is the, um, what'd she call it? She called this an overnight sponge. I've never heard of that before, but here it is. So to that, we're going to add another 85 grams of freshly milled flour, which is about a half a cup. And then it says more or less as needed. We're gonna do one tablespoon of honey, uh, three fourths a, a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of baking soda. And then over here, I've got a baking sheet dusted with cornmeal. So let's start by adding in the honey, I think. Let's go ahead and get all of this mixed together before we add in the flour because she said the flour is really going to depend on the hydration of everything. Okay, I, it's already looking a little wet, so I'm going to sprinkle in some of the flour. When the dough looks shiny, that to me means it's wet. And that's just my opinion. That's just kind of something that I'm picking up on here. The spots where it's real shiny, it's, you know, visibly wet. And that tells me that I can stand to add a little bit more flour. Okay, I'm not going to add any more for now because it's starting like it doesn't look wet anymore. And I've got probably a fourth a cup left. But when I go to the step where I roll it out to um, cut out my English muffins, I may find that it needs a little bit more. And I will be comfortable adding a little bit more flour. I want to move back to my dinner rolls here. They've been resting for definitely 15 minutes. I want to add in that additional tablespoon, or was it teaspoon? I think it was teaspoon. The additional teaspoon of uh, active dry yeast, like she suggested. And then it says knead the dough until it passes the window pane test. You guys already know how I feel about the window pane test. And I'm not sure that this is the morning to learn new things. So I'm just going to let it knead for like 10 minutes and we'll go from there. So I ended up adding roughly another 80 grams of flour and this is still super wet. And I did watch some of her video and hers formed this like really nice, like the ball of dough pulled away from the sides and like was really nice. And this is wet. Um, and I think that that's, that happens when you do freshly milled flour, the conversions always aren't spot on and it depends on a few different things. Um, so I, it says to let it rest for one to two hours. I'm going to let it do that. And then the following step is shaping into the rolls. And so if I find that it's just way, way too wet to do that, then I'll just add flour as I go. I don't want to add too much flour, you know? So I think I'm just gonna do that. So <laughs> I preheated, I turned my oven on to like warm it back up a little bit. And usually as soon as it says 100, I turn it off and crack the door. And I had my um, bread in there proofing. That's why I did that. And then I forgot and I saw like smoke rising up from the stove and I was like, what's going on? And I was like, oh my gosh. So not only did I almost burn my house down this morning, but it started to bake my bread. So I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna go ahead and bake it. Luckily it had risen quite a bit. It's been like two hours. Um, so it had looked pretty good. So I put some butter on top of it and preheated the oven properly uh, to 375 and I'm baking it for 40 minutes. And I took the dish towel out of the oven. <laughs> so we're moving on to the English muffins. Um, you want to lightly oil your surface, which is fun. I've never done that before. I always lightly flour it, but you lightly oil it. And then you roll out your dough to a half an inch to three fourths an inch thick. I'm also cooking some breakfast because I am so hungry. I need to re-season my cast iron. It's kind of rough, but doesn't that look delicious? Mm -mm -mm. Oof, so good. All right, let's roll this baby out. So I've seen other people say that they like to keep their dough actually kind of on the thicker side because they like thicker English muffins. And I, I think I would like thicker English muffins. I don't think I would want mine to be super thin. So I'm going to keep it kind of on the thicker side. 
And then I have this set of round cutters. I'll try, if I can find them, I'll link them down below. But I really love them. I like them for biscuits too. And then I'm gonna go through and cut them out. And then I'm gonna set them on my cornmeal dusted baking sheet over here. And we're not baking them. This is just for them to hang out while I'm working. Okay, now we're gonna start making the English muffins. I'm gonna use my cast iron skillet. Um, the recipe recommends using a griddle and heating it to 325. I have no such thing. So I'm going to cook them in my cast iron. She warns that if you're gonna use a skillet, you've gotta keep the temp low enough that the outside doesn't burn before the inside cooks. So I've got this heating to medium low, and if it starts smoking, then I will just reduce the temperature. I've got both sides dusted with the cornmeal. And I'm gonna line the outer edges with them instead of the middle because the middle always gets really hot. The recipe says it takes about five to seven minutes per side, but to flip them um, periodically to keep them from getting too brown. I'm gonna go ahead and flip one of these and see what the other side is looking like. Ooh, pretty. So I'm gonna reduce the heat because they're getting a little brown, but the inside is definitely still not done. I'm also gonna just kind of press them down a little to see if I can't get some of the uncooked to come out. And that looks like an English muffin. All right, I think that these are almost done. They're not feeling soft anymore. And I don't think that that's too brown. I think that looks good. I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes on this side and then I'm gonna call these good. We are in the home stretch, you guys. I've got my last two English muffins cooking and I just took out my loaves of bread. They look great. Now we need to uh, finish up dealing with these dinner rolls. I don't have any more olive oil, so I'm gonna oil my surface with a little bit of coconut oil because this recipe also says to oil your work surface. Now, my dough has been rising for a little over an hour. It has not quite doubled, and the recipe says for it to double. I'm kind of running out of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and deal with it. Remember that when I finished mixing this dough, it was very, very sticky. So let's see what we're dealing with. Still looks really sticky. It looks like pumpkin. I don't know why. Oh yeah, oh that's so sticky. All right, I've got a bit more here, and I'm gonna sprinkle a generous amount because this is super sticky, as you saw. And I'm just going to try and see if I can get this to be more manageable. I love working with dough, but I hate having my, my hands being dirty. It's I've always hated having my hands dirty. Um, and so it, that's kind of a tough trade-off sometimes because when you're working with dough, your hands oftentimes end up really, really sticky but I've loved having my bench scraper. That's really helped. I'm trying to get this to be more manageable because we have to shape these into individual um, dinner rolls. And so I'm gonna have my hands on this dough quite a bit. So I need it to be workable. It can't just be one sticky blob. Like it's gotta be something that I can handle and shape. Okay, that's much better, much better. All right, so this supposedly makes 12 rolls. Um, this did not double all the way, so I don't have quite the volume, so I'm gonna do the best I can to try and get 12 rolls. And then I have a nine by 13 baking dish here lined with parchment paper, and we're gonna put them in there spaced a bit apart because these supposedly are going to um, continue to um, get puffier. Yeah, oh, this feels much better. Okay, I was afraid that this perhaps was a lost cause, but I don't think that it is. So now that I'm getting into the inside of this dough ball, it is still pretty sticky, but it's actually not terrible. I think we're gonna be okay. So let me work with some of what I've got here. So she says to build tension. So she was pulling it around and pinching it. Pulling it around and pinching it and building tension. You can also do that by rolling it on your work surface away from you and then towards you away from you and then towards you that's going to be kind of hard to do with these because they're so sticky but 
and then I'm just going to put them in my baking dish. I'm so enjoying having my grain mill and I'm so glad that we're getting to eat all this yummy food and have all the benefits, the health benefits of consuming freshly milled grains. That makes me very, very happy. Okay, here are my dinner rolls. A couple of them are bigger than the others. That's just life, am I right? Um, I'm really excited with how these look actually. I think that these turned out really nice. I was a little worried there for a second with the dough being so different, but I've said it before, if you kind of know what you're shooting for, like what the dough's supposed to look like, then typically there are a few tricks you can do to get you yourself there. And that's what we did here. I'm just gonna cover these with cling wrap. I'm not gonna bake these here. The reason being, she says in her video, if you want your rolls to have more of a yeasty flavor, to let them rest overnight. And I do, I want these to be yeasted dinner rolls. I love that flavor. Um, and so I'm going to let these just hang out. I'm gonna put them in the fridge for now. And then they're obviously gonna be in the car with us on the way there. I'll put them in the fridge when we get there. And then tomorrow night, I'll take them out. It says, let them, take them out and let them come to room temperature before you bake them. So I'll take them out a few hours before we're going to eat and then I'll bake them. Okay, last thing. Let's take a look at these English muffins. So, they look like English muffins. That is very exciting. Let's break one of these bad boys open. Let's see. This one is pretty well cooled off, I think. We'll do this one. And so I know that you're supposed to break it open with a fork. You're not supposed to um, cut it with a knife because that makes it like gummy. So let's go around it with a fork here. Oh, I hope these look good. It's okay if they don't though. My first time making them, you know? Ah, very good. Feels good. Smells good. Awesome. Let's butter one of these babies up. Okay, let's try a bite and then I'm gonna take this over to Tom. They taste just like an English muffin. Like it definitely tastes like the one you buy in the store, but it feels different in my mouth. This worked out perfectly. I've got my English muffins and then a loaf of my bread all fit in this Tupperware container. That is so, that's all, that's very convenient. So I'm not gonna cut into the bread. You don't wanna cut into freshly baked bread because that makes the inside gummy. You wanna let it completely cool before you cut it. And we won't cut into this until we get to the Airbnb. We're gonna have sandwiches for lunch. Um, so I'm going to pack it just like this and let it cool. And this is how I'm taking my bread products. Hi friends, welcome to our Airbnb. So, sorry, I look a little rough. Tom's in the shower. I'm gonna shower after we eat breakfast, but this is the downstairs, the kitchen of our Airbnb. We are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we are staying in an old firehouse. This is an old firehouse that was converted into an Airbnb, and this is the basement that they've converted into a kitchen. So I'm down here cooking our breakfast, and I just thought I'd come and say hello and kind of show you around a little bit, but most importantly, I wanna show you what we're doing food wise because that's the whole point of this video. We come down the stairs here and we've got a microwave over there. We've got a little kitchen um, table and chair set. We've got this adorable little fridge. So cute. And then when you move along the wall here, this is where we've got the sink. There's a little dishwasher and I've been keeping, let's see right in here, we've got the blondie bars that I made. And then down here, we've got the English muffins and we've been munching on them. They're so good. And coming over here, this is where I have been cooking. So I've got my sourdough starter, my eggs, butter, salt, and I've got my um, flatbread in the my cast iron skillet right now. Of course, watching some YouTube while I cook. And then they've got this cutting board on the table. So I've had my bread sitting here so good by the way this turned out delicious and um right before i turned on the camera i was chopping veggies for breakfast super cute down here i'm not going to show you upstairs because that's where we've got all of our stuff but this is cute i've got <laughs> my milk <laughs> and my normal breakfast and then across the table for me i've got an um ham egg and cheese english muffin and a handsome husband bye <laughs> 
we have walked all over the area of Philly that we're staying in. And now I have to get the rolls out so they can come to room temperature before I bake them for dinner tonight. And that needs to be like one to two hours. It's five o'clock. So six to seven o'clock sounds fair. Um, so when they were in the car, they rose, but then when I put them in, in the fridge, they fell. So they're not puffy anymore. So I'm hoping taking them out, they'll become puffy again. They'll rise again. I don't know what's going to happen with these rolls, you guys. It's always been pretty questionable to me what was going to happen with these rolls. <laughs> so we'll see. Two hours and a glorious vacation nap later and our rolls are ready to get put in the oven. So I've got the oven preheating to 350 degrees right now and here are what our rolls look like. Not really puffed back up too much. They're pretty like wet and flat. Oh, I just caught a whiff. They smell very yeasty. Um, so hopefully they puff up while we're baking them in the oven. I'll show you what we're working with after we bake them. And then of course, I'll give you a glimpse of what we have for dinner on this night of vacation. Tomorrow is when we come back and I have a little surprise that I'm taking Tom to. So there may be a little bit of footage or some pictures from that, but otherwise this trip is almost over. It's been really fun, just a few days, quick trip, but it's been awesome exploring Philly with my love. And um, here is some footage, some pictures, some random little bits from our time here. I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this time, you guys. I can't wait to see you in my next one. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward. Bye. We had so much fun walking around and looking at all of the history, all of the architecture, the buildings were just absolutely gorgeous. Some of the stuff we were looking at was so old. It was just, it was really incredible. I so enjoyed walking around and looking at all of the history. We went to this really cool cemetery that was like right in the middle of all these tall buildings and it's where Benjamin Franklin's grave is as well as um, some other signers of the Declaration of Independence and it was just oh I you could just feel the history it was just so it was really really cool and I loved walking around on the cobblestone I don't know why but it just it felt so special I really enjoyed it. We also explored and found the ship that we were able to go on. And the one time that I ate out, we got true Philly cheesesteaks and they were good. They were good. I'm probably going to catch a little flack for this, but I will say we went to the Penn Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Tom really is into like Egyptian stuff and it freaked me right out. I mean... The museum was wonderful and it was very well done, but I, I'm i rereading the Bible. I just finished reading the book of Exodus where they were freed from Egypt. And wow, like the history really lines up. A lot of the things that I was seeing tracked and it was, I didn't touch anything. It was like uh, some of the, the plaques were talking about like magic spells and stuff. And I was like, Ugh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> it was freaking me right out. Uh, but I mean, it was cool. Tom enjoyed it. One thing that I really enjoyed, though, was seeing all of the pottery and the pots and pans and the silverware because it just showed me that, you know, one thing that is consistent across of history is homemaking.